So, is this sustainable development? Well, we've already discussed the importance of conservation in semi-arid Africa and how this creates development. We've also shown how farmers dig terraces, build sand dams and plant trees to conserve soil and water. And how this enables them to meet their priorities of water, food and incomes. We'll now look at some factors in the human environment that help or hinder sustainable development. You may be familiar with the term top-down development, whereby activities are defined and implemented by governments and large agencies without involving communities in either decision-making or implementation. This contrasts with the bottom-up approach, where communities define their own priorities and are actively involved in implementation, ensuring community ownership. I wouldn't say they have done good or bad, depending on how people see what they did. But I, as a person, have worked for four charities, different charities. And out of my working period, I went through a lot of frustration. Because what people wanted to see happen was not what the policy or the ideas of that charity were. So most of the time I was frustrated. And I think the happy part of my life is... I'm able now to be in a charity that says, listen to the people rather than to what the experts say. The local community itself must be involved. They must themselves identify the needs that they want to meet, the problems they want to solve. What we need to do is to accompany them in solving their own problems, but not create our own problems and go to try to go to solve them on their behalf. I think that elimination of or eradication of poverty cannot be done when people create problems and solve them in other people's areas. Excellent development have a bottom-up philosophy and approach. The start point is a community and their defined problems and priorities. The community are organised into a self-help group, meaning they contribute significantly to their own benefits. For example, they terrace the land for free and contribute half the cost of sand dams. Excellent development was, was developed and born out of a successful model developed by Africans for Africans. An excellent development, all it does is to help that model be transferred and replicated in other parts of in other parts of Kenya and hopefully in the future in other parts of Africa as well. To further understand the philosophy and approach, let's hear what the people involved with excellent development have to say. Uh, excellent development, in the few years it has existed, we have been able to talk to communities according to their needs. They explain to us what they want to see happen and then we are enabling them to get to where they want to go, just giving them the knowledge that they need, enabling them to do what they think is going to help them. One of the things about Excellent Development's work is that it, it requires a tremendous amount of community engagement. So it isn't just about a programme to go and build a latrine here, to go and build a dam there, to go and provide a goat here. It's about getting into the skin and under the skin of a community, working with them, understanding what their priorities are, understanding how they want to move forward and then helping them to do it. That takes a lot of time. It takes people with the sort of skill that Joshua has to be able to do that. But in our mind, the only real way to help a community move forward and to continue to move forward once we've gone is to do it that way. I like the way that they work with the community to do it. And it's not just some people coming over and doing what they think should be, needs to be done. It's, it was like started over here and it's a lot to do with about the community as opposed to individuals' ideas and what should happen. One of the strengths of Excellent Development's work is the fact that we, we, we don't work with communities in isolation from each other. We, because we're a charity that works on the basis of listening to the people and acting upon that, actually the people themselves are the biggest power and the biggest um, enabler of development. So to enable uh, people to move forward, we bring the people together. So one community will go and visit another. Representatives of communities will all come together in a meeting. 
and what they do is to discuss their problems. They see one community is a little further ahead than the other and that gives them motivation. Someone has ideas of particular solutions, they see a particular idea or solution working, like intercropping, like napier grass, like the planting of trees. They see that working and they get encouraged by their own people telling them and explaining to them what they've done and how they've, how they've moved forward. So the power isn't coming from outside and giving people solutions. The power is absolutely in helping people to help each other. Few, few years ago, I was doing nothing. I was seated bottomly, warm paper, my buttons without nothing. But when they came, they gave me a good idea. That's why you can see I'm doing the good work. And I'm ready to do it because I'm, I have that experience. And you're proud? Yeah. I'm proud of my job. Yeah. Another common problem with sustainability is the technology used. Development projects sometimes use technology that cannot be designed, improved and controlled by local people. The technology often depends on imported materials and skills the communities don't have, making the solution hard to sustain. Africa is indeed littered with broken water pumps that couldn't be repaired once the development agencies had left. Let's look at what some experts say about these issues. The dam behind us here uh, was uh, first constructed in, in 1985. The community here did not want to break the law, so they went to the district uh, uh, engineer's office and they asked for plans and they were given plans. When they came here they discussed it, every detail, and they modified it in order to suit uh, their, their needs. For example, the spillway had been on the, at, at the edge because that's the way most, most dams are, are constructed. The community said, no, if we do that, the rainwater will come and wash away the dam. They put it just exactly at the center of the river where the river normally is. And they also discussed the, the mix. They wanted gravel mixed with sand. They said, no, they're going to use local materials there. The boulders themselves would become part of the re reinforcement. A few years ago, I was here with this, uh, this engineer who is now teaching at one of our universities. He confirmed that they were right and the experts were wrong. When considering the technology the communities use, it's clear how simple but effective terracing and sand dams are. They're made entirely using local design skills and labour. All of the materials for sand dams are locally available, with most of them taken directly from the riverbed in which they're built. The beauty of sand dams is that you're creating springs, you're not utilising springs. So the sand dam will add water to the, to the community. And in actual fact, what's even more beautiful about them is that they're built from the river itself. So the water's collected, the sand that's collected in the river is used to build the dam. The stones are broken off by the community. So with a little bit of addition of cement and some steel, actually they're creating water for themselves out of the river itself. So this sums up Excellent Development's approach to sustainable development. And the final word goes to one of the farmers they work with. There's a saying that says, better train a, a child to, to catch fish than to give, to give him the fish. So by saying that, I mean, uh, the skill that we are getting now from Excellent Development is more important than the help that we can be given. Because you can give us one million, and that million with me, it will add up, you know, a month. You find that there's nothing. Then we stay, we stay, and we start stretching our hands again to borrow. But when our mind is filled with the skill, then we'll do for ourselves. And that sums up sustainable development. Here are some more questions for you, which should be easier to answer now you've seen the film. Thank you for watching.